This has been an adventure that, in many respects, was more difficult and challenging than building the electric car itself. Since all of my previous electric cars had been conversions of existing cars, or kit cars, the design and engineering work behind them was relatively easy. Not so with this aspect of the project. This phase forced me to stretch my imagination and develop new skills. While far from perfect, the results produced by our first attempt at a fiberglass project of this magnitude were exceptional. This part of the project deals with what is called moldless construction. Kit cars are designed, molds are built, and then the cars are produced from molds. That's not the case with this project. We had to construct a framework to hold the styrofoam together and then apply layers of fiberglass, fabric, and epoxy to build the actual body. There are six basic steps you have to follow to complete the fiberglass body. One, body design. Two, construction of the internal form. Three, shaping the styrofoam. Four, surface preparation. Five, fiberglassing the body. Six, body filler and finishing. Body design. What do you want the finished car to look like? That's certainly a basic question and one that must be answered in great detail. In my case, I had in my mind the basic design that I wanted. My goal was to create what I called a retro style sports car look, something reminiscent of the old Triumphs with long flowing lines and gentle curves. I have excellent visualization skills and I could see in my mind's eye exactly how I wanted the finished car to look. However, I admit my drawing skills do leave something to be desired. Nevertheless, Armed with the vision in my head and some basic sketches, I contacted others with more artistic skills than I, and together we were able to produce some sketches that reflected the look I had in mind. Unless you're an artist, or know someone that is, and you're capable of cutting the body shape from large sheets of styrofoam, you'll have to create a sort of a skeletal framework to hold everything together. To capture the design features you want in three dimensions requires some creativity and scavenging. As you build the skeleton of the body, you need to locate existing objects that resemble the shapes you're looking for. Anything can be used to hold the shape, as it does not necessarily have to become part of the finished body. I used many common objects to get the desired shapes. I visited Lowe's, Home Depot, and junkyards. Even plastic storage containers come in a variety of shapes and sizes. See in your mind's eye how an ordinary object can become just the shape you need for design detail. Parts can even be shaped from heavy cardboard and then covered with fiberglass. You are limited only by your imagination. In our case, we used some shapes from an old dune buggy, coupled with bulkheads, plastic furring strips available from home improvement stores, plywood, and a variety of objects to hold certain shapes while we fiberglassed. After the framework was complete, we built outward by adding layers from the inside out until the body was finalized with a coat of automotive paint. When a body is built from a mold, the process is just the opposite. Top coats are applied first to the inside of the mold and then subsequent layers are added for strength. With moldless construction, we work from the inside out and the last layer applied is the finished layer. Surface preparation and final painting are very tedious and time consuming. However, the care you take during the entire process will certainly pay off with superior results. Construction of the internal form. We started by constructing a very large table that we could build a body on. This table measured 16 feet long and 5 feet wide. We then put the basic pieces of the old dune buggy in place and used clamps to hold it all together. This allowed us to begin to get a feel for what the body would look like. Furring strips were bent and shaped to achieve the desired design. The furring strips were made from a PVC composite material and were very flexible and durable. We used two different size furring strips. One strip was about three quarters of an inch wide and the other one was about a half inch wide. It was really very easy to get the bows and bends to stay in place. We simply stabilized the components by bolting them to the chassis and then cut the furring strip to the desired length, forcing them to flex. We duplicated the process for the other side and were able to achieve the same degree of bends in the material. To stabilize the basket weave, the furring strips were bolted together. The bolt heads were not countersunk. The styrofoam was able to compress over the heads, making them barely noticeable. If you look carefully in the picture, you can see the batteries were already in place, just to make sure there was plenty of room for them. Shaping of the styrofoam. We used a different technique than the standard practice when it came to shaping the styrofoam. Most articles we read talked about using one or two inch thick foam and then sanding it into the desired shape. In our case, we built the framework in the desired shape and then applied a thin layer of styrofoam to that framework. 
The thin foam was able to follow the framework perfectly. The styrofoam we used was a thin pink foam product available from our local home improvement store. This came in an accordion folded package and each section was 48 inches long and 24 inches wide. The material was less than a quarter inch thick. We cut the foam in each fold and then cut it to fit the frame. We discovered that one side of the styrofoam had a thin layer of plastic on it. I assume it was there to act as a vapor barrier since this was an insulating foam product. That side of the product should be placed against the furring strips. If you fiberglassed over the plastic, there would be the possibility that the plastic could pull away from the foam, that's called delaminating, and weaken the structure. Make sure you sand the top layer so that the fiberglass will achieve a good bond. Also, I suggest you hand sand the edges before you fit the styrofoam to the ribs. This will remove any rough spots and put a slight bevel on the edges. We used a very simple technique to attach the styrofoam to the ribs. After we made sure the foam was cut to the correct size, and be sure you use care using a razor knife, and then test fit it into place, we applied a bead of liquid nails to the edge of the furring strip, and then used a staple gun to secure the foam in place. After it dried, it created a very strong bond. On the edges where the foam was attached to the old dune buggy, we used a bead of liquid nails and small wooden strips to hold the styrofoam in place. Later, we sanded the edges to allow a smooth transition from the foam to the old fiberglass dune buggy. As you can see in this picture of the rear of the car, using this technique, it is possible to create very complex curves and shapes with the styrofoam. Extensive modifications were necessary to create the long, lean look with the flowing curves. Also, to improve the vehicle's aerodynamics, wheel covers were created. Both the front and rear sections of the car were flared. Surface Preparation To prepare the surface for fiberglassing does require a little effort. First, we applied a sandable caulk to the styrofoam joints and smoothed it with a putty knife, or even a scrap piece of styrofoam will work. We also applied just a little bit of caulk to the indentations created by the individual staples and sanded them smooth as well. The old body elements were then sanded with 80 grit paper to scruff up the existing fiberglass in order to approve the epoxy bonding. After sanding, the body was thoroughly cleaned to remove all dust and moisture. Dirt and moisture left on the surface can create poor adhesion and cause the fiberglass to delaminate. Make sure you use proper personal protective equipment when working on your project. At a minimum, this would include ear protection, eye protection, a good quality dust mask when sanding, and protective gloves when working with the epoxy. As always, your personal safety is your responsibility.